You're entirely bonkers. But I'll tell you a secret. All the best people are. Welcome back to Howdy Sailing. Thank you so much for joining once again. These videos are made possible by my patrons as well as my coffee supporters. So a giant, giant thank you to them as well as my channel subscribers. So you want to get a taste of island life and you're thinking of heading off to the Bahamas. With the western islands of the Bahamas located just 50 miles away from Florida's east coast, sailing to the Bahamas is very possible even in the most modest of sailboats. All you need to know is when and how to get there. With over 700 separate islands spread across an ocean area as big as the state of Florida, it's easy to see why the Bahamas is a paradise and one of the top sailing destinations in the world. It may be an overnight sail away from South Florida, but deciding when the best month to sail and how to sail to the Bahamas can be overwhelming to most new sailors. There are several factors such as where you're sailing from, the weather conditions and the hurricane season that may determine your Bahamas sailing experience. So when is the best time to sail to the Bahamas? Even though you can technically sail to the Bahamas year round, the best time to sail to the Bahamas from Florida is between December and April. The weather is warm and there are no hurricanes and the water is relatively calm. One of the most important things to consider when planning sailing to the Bahamas is the weather conditions. You certainly do not want to be caught out by a deadly hurricane when sailing to the Bahamas, so you should avoid sailing during the hurricane months from June to November. As far as hurricanes are concerned, they do tend to head towards the United States versus the Bahamas. So once you're in the Bahamas, it's generally not a giant concern. Statistically speaking, the chance of a hurricane hitting the Bahamas during the official hurricane season is one in five chances. So in my personal opinion, having lived in the hurricane belt, for basically most of my life, hurricanes are not at all a concern to me. You have so much advanced warning, you have plenty of time, no matter where you are, to steer clear of them or outrun and avoid them. The average hurricane only moves around five to 10 miles an hour and you have weeks and weeks of notice. So it's not something to take into consideration all that much as long as you're sailing outside of the hurricane season. Even if sailing at peak hurricane season, again, you have plenty of time to outrun these storms as well as plenty of advance notice to get out of the way. Now, let's say your average sailboat sails at around seven knots. This may take most of the day from your point of departure in South Florida to a safe harbor in one of the islands in the Western Bahamas. In addition to the slow speed, the powerful northerly Gulf Stream currents can seriously affect a slow speed, heavy displacement hull. The starting point. So where do we leave from? Well, the best departure point from the mainland United States is generally Florida. You can start the voyage from typically anywhere in South Florida, but the crossing is much easier if you go further to the south. That's why many sailors sailing to the Bahamas from the United States choose Miami as their favorite departure point. The reason going south is better is basically due to the Gulf Stream. Crossing the Gulf Stream by boat from Florida to the Bahamas takes more planning than most routes. Figuring where you should leave from, how long the trip will take, what course to steer, and other details can absolutely seem overwhelming at times. So what is the Gulf Stream? The Gulf Stream is literally a river of water in the Atlantic Ocean that runs north between Florida and the Bahamas or east between Florida and Cuba. It typically averages around two and two and a half knots. You can learn how to get the exact location and speed of the Gulf Stream in the link below in the description, as the Gulf Stream is constantly moving. If you're planning to check in at Bimini in the Bahamas, you actually would want to move further south from Miami and use Key Largo as your departure point. But if you plan to check in on the Abacos, Fort Lauderdale or Miami will be your best departure point since they will allow you to ride the Gulf Stream for a bit. Bimini has two main islands, North Bimini and South Bimini, with surrounding reefs, rocks, and smaller caves. Alice Town is the main settlement with the King's Highway and Queen's Highway is the main path through the seven miles of North Bimini. 
Because of the popularity and close proximity to the states, this area is well developed and filled with tourists exploring the beautiful beaches and fantastic fishing grounds. No matter which route you take when sailing to the Bahamas, the beauty of the Gulf Stream is without a doubt one of the highlights of this voyage. You may experience calm crossing, but keep in mind that the area between Florida and Bimini or any other island in the western Bahamas can be very extreme, especially if the wind is blowing from the north. This is why you should be on top of the weather information before setting sail and pick your weather window properly. If you leave Florida and head due east, 90 degrees, Every hour that you travel, you'll go eastward, whatever your speed is, and north two to two and a half miles. Now, that north amount is an average. Some hours you'll go more north and some less. Depending on whether you're at the edge of the Gulf Stream or right in the center, the average, however, is the important thing for route planning. The Gulf Stream has considerably warmer water than the ocean around it and that means that thunderstorms are more likely as you cross it. It is also very, very busy with lots of cargo ships heading up and down the East Coast and many small to medium-sized boats going between Florida and the Bahamas. Crossing the Gulf Stream as quickly as possible will decrease the danger from both of these. Something I always say in all of my videos is the faster you can cross the ocean, the safer you will be. Older, big, heavy displacement boats are not ideal in general for Caribbean sailing. If sailing the Caribbean is your long-term goal, avoid the so-called quote-unquote blue water boats. There are far, far better vessels suited for this type of sailing. There are two important concepts to know when planning this route. First, your heading. This is where you're appointing the boat. It's what your ship's compass will show or your autopilot heading. Secondly, your course or course over ground. This is the direction the boat as a whole is actually moving and what is reflected on your chart plotter course. With the Gulf Stream, your heading and course will never be the same. Your course over ground will always be north of your heading due to the Gulf Stream pushing you north. Welcome to the Bermuda Triangle, ladies and gentlemen. It gets a little weird sometimes. Crossing the Gulf Stream as fast as possible, your heading should never be any amount south of due east on the way to the Bahamas. Turn literally two degrees south of due east and see your speed over ground drop over half a knot. A few degrees more and it will drop to nearly a knot less. The faster you get across the Gulf Stream, the less you'll get swept north. One key to a faster speed is to motor or motor sail at your max cruising speed. Many of us dream of pure sailing across the Gulf Stream, but it's rare to get conditions that allow for a fast crossing under sail alone. Now, as always, when sailing, always have a backup plan. Should you be crossing to the Bahamas and have engine problems, you'll have to sail at slower speeds. Be aware that you are almost certainly going to wind up farther north than you had expected. Always have some alternative destinations in mind before planning this crossing just in case something does happen along the way and you do get swept north due to the Gulf Stream. Now, a lot of cruisers do start at Miami or the Fort Lauderdale area and head for Bimini, but Bimini is actually south of Miami. This means that you're gonna have to do one of two things. Fight the current all day, which will cut your speed drastically, or two, allow the Gulf Stream to sweep you north by heading due east, then turning and heading south once you are on the far side of the stream. With any luck, on the other side, you'll find a countercurrent to help you get back south. Either of those two options are going to add hours to your trip. You're better off with what I would call a third option. Take a day as you're waiting for your weather window to cross and head south. If heading south first isn't practical, my personal preference would be the second option. Once you cross the Gulf Stream, then head south on the other side. The stream usually doesn't run right up to the islands. There is often even a countercurrent on that side, the east side of the stream. In this case, you head due east across the stream and then turn for your destination once you are across. You will not follow the rum line and your chart plotter will keep showing you being further off course until you make the turn on the far side of the stream. If you decide to go the fight the current route, you can simply set your waypoints as usual and steer to follow the rub line across. Your heading will change as the stream is stronger in some places than other. 
Be aware, however, that your speed over ground is likely to be at least a knot less than your typically average, so plan accordingly for that. Now, heading to the Bahamas from the Keys, in my opinion, is the absolute best route. A short sailing trip to Bimini is only around 60 nautical miles one way. If you leave from around Key Largo, let's say Rodriguez Key, you will cover about 60 miles when sailing to Bimini. You will leave from Rodriguez Key, sail due east, hit the Gulf Stream that will then push you north, and with any luck, you should arrive with ease right at Bimini. Bimini will give you a glimpse of what to expect deep into the Bahamas, and it will at least give you a taste of what it's like to cross the Gulf Stream. You can anchor your sailboat behind Gun K to the north of Cat K. First, figure the east-west mileage and then divide it by your average speed to know how far north you are likely to be swept. Either on paper or electric chart, mark a point, this number of miles due south of your intended destination. Then figure the steering course for the route. It should be at less than 90. This is your heading to steer and should on average keep you near the rub line course of your actual destination. You will probably be north of the rum line in the middle of the trip where the string is the strongest. Then come back towards the rum line in the second half. Because the trip is longer and you're in the stream longer, the estimated steering heading is less likely to be perfect and may need a little tweaking as you see how conditions actually are developing once you are on the crossing. In my opinion, the trip from the Florida Keys to the Bahamas is one of the absolute best ways to get a taste of several different types of sailing. You'll be out on blue water in the deep ocean. You'll be crossing the Gulf Stream and have to deal with currents. You'll wind up in a tropical paradise like you could never imagine. So if you are new to sailing, with it only being 60 nautical miles, it's a fantastic first crossing to make. It's very, very easily accomplished with a little bit of planning. Pick the correct weather window and you will be in great shape. Hopefully you found this video enjoyable. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, these are all brought to you by my patrons as well as my coffee supporters. So please consider becoming a patron as you do get access to our members only area where I'm available to chat live in person every single day. It's less than the cost of Netflix and it helps me continue making the videos. Don't forget to give the video a thumbs up, like, and if you're not subscribed and you found the video enjoyable and learned something, please subscribe. Thank you so, so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.